welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Van Buren in Clearwater County. And in today's episode, we are going to be focusing on this. Well, well maybe not this in particular, but on transit, and in particular, rail. I think it's something that is, is sorely missing in this area, and in the previous episode, we built this lovely end-of-line train station, and we're gonna get it hooked up today. Now, if you recall, the reason that we're building this is the state legislature uh, was struggling to get into this community. One of the reasons for that is this little bit of a bottleneck here that we're seeing on Mulligan Avenue. So this is a significant constraint. There's not many ways to get here right now. You're either coming around this way, coming from the DDI, going through Shorewood, past the golf course and into the community here, or you're coming here, which is quite a, quite a trek as well. So. In this episode, we are going to get this repaired, get this fixed, and extend our rail line all the way around this little bluff here, connect up back here, and make connections to our train station. In addition, we are going to develop this area right here, extend our neighborhood out, and begin to grow. I think that we can grow our population by a few thousand this episode, and I'm excited to do so. But first, a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Dexter thought he was going on a vacation to Italy, but somehow ended up in Clearwater County. So to make a trip of it, he's decided to visit the haunted houses of Belmont, the floating cars of Ashland, and this little boutique retailer that everyone in town is talking about. But when you're on vacation, there can be danger everywhere, including on the internet, which is where today's video sponsor comes in. NordVPN provides you with a fast and secure internet connection wherever you are, with over 5,000 servers in 60 countries across the globe. And you can use NordVPN on almost any device out there, whether you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, or iOS. But it's not just about security. Using NordVPN, you'll be able to access region lock content from around the world. This is super helpful for me when I want to watch my favorite shows in Europe and the UK. It has been one eventful day, so now Dexter's going to take a load off by having a safe, secure, fast, and fun internet browsing experience. And you can too. Go to nordvpn.com slash cityplanner or use code cityplanner at checkout for a highly discounted two-year plan. Once again, that's nordvpn.com slash cityplanner. Our electricity availability is not where it needs to be. So that's the very first thing we need to take care of. This is actually going to, going to prevent us from having any further development. The game will just kind of stop development as uh, you run out of energy. So I initially thought about placing the power plant right here, uh, but I want to do something a little bit different. So I want to build a coal power plant. One of the main reasons for this is I think it's just the most suitable for the region right now. In the future, we might do something a little bit different, but we have ores in this area, so I think it makes sense to add one of those. So let's pop into here. And we're gonna use the exact same coal power plant that we used in Ashland. And I also wanna have some storage here for coal. So we're gonna grab this, extend this out, and we'll take a look at our ores. And at the very back side, I believe that we have zoned ore bulk storage. And that's what we're gonna add here. And this is really a wonderful asset. Uh, this is, uh, you can see that the, it, it, it has a way to process this and move it along. In fact, I wonder if we take this and scoot this over, maybe even a bit further. I was hoping we could make it appear as though this is, is going into the plant. I don't think that's gonna be all that easy to do here. Actually, this isn't too bad. So we'll just back that up a bit. This will still operate. And now it appears that this conveyor goes into the power plant. So I like that a lot. One of the things we need to do here though is add some parking. That's something that I've been missing quite often in this area, uh, in fact, entirely. So <laughs> we're gonna build a small parking lot. I think that's gonna be important for us here. So why don't we go ahead. What I think I'm gonna do is build a big parking lot. I know I go back and forth on whether or not I want to build these or build some of the other lots, but I'm gonna go with the big parking lots this time. I'm gonna turn off road guidelines. The main reason for that is the guidelines can really make it difficult to actually build things. And the reason for that is you'll end up 
instead of having whole units in between your parking lot, you'll end up with a partial unit, and that's no good. So now I have a full unit, and that's, that's really helpful. So that's one for parking, one for the middle, another for parking. Actually, I think I need five. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm talking like there are all of these different uh, options, but there's not. And truthfully, I probably should send these through rather than people needing to walk through the parking lot. I should send the middle drives, the fillers, through like this. And this will give people the ability to walk a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that's a good solution. Now, I know this looks pretty janky right now. We're going to get that fixed. But for the time being, this is going to be just what we need to get moving. Okay, so I'm trying to find a good way to connect these up, and it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. So I think I might revert back to what I was doing. I don't exactly love the way it looks, but it's a parking lot at a coal plant. Not exactly the time to let perfect be the enemy of good. And we could fill this in with a with some concrete, and we will absolutely do that. So now I do want to level these out. So I'm just going to come through and highlight all of these, and then set the object height to something that seems reasonable. Go with this. And there's a little bit of popping up right there. I've got a solution for that. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's get our parking spaces in place. And I'm curious, are there any doors back here? I think that's the closest door. And there's already accessible parking. But I'm going to add a couple of stalls back here anyway. I just wanted to get rid of the middle there just so that folks could circulate through here a little bit better. Now we're going to need some sort of lighting here. We're going to get to that as soon as we fix some of our issues here. So the problem here is that the terrain height is not high enough to support this parking lot. So we just need to extend this out a little ways. Some of those wonky things that we're seeing will go away. There we go. Much, much, much better. We'll get our concrete in place and then we'll add some lighting to this parking lot. So now we're going to set it to night and see what this looks like. I don't need to throw prop anarchy on and this looks pretty good. I like the glow of this. It's bright. I'm going to come on either end, place these and then find the center, more or less. Now I can come through and just copy these. So use move it to copy, come over here in place, perfect. Now interestingly this lines up very well over here as well. So I'm able to quickly copy those, select these lights, and then I'll copy those, line them up, paste, and paste. There we go. Nice, beautiful parking lot, or a parking lot. <laughs> Let's take this back today. We've got some more work to do, and that work is going to be adding some fences. So I want to go with something a little bit industrial looking, maybe with right here. So this chain link fence, I think is absolutely perfect. We'll go into fence mode and prop, uh, prop line tool. And I just want to fence in this ore storage and I'll need to come into here and turn on anarchy. We'll extend this out and I'll leave an opening here so that vehicles could get inside. There we go. I see we have this industrial gate, so I want to see if I can make this look okay. I'll need to modify things a bit, but I think it's possible. So what we're going to do is come over here. I'm going to place this right about here. And then we'll come in to move it, and we want this to be the only selectable options so i'll select that put the picker inside and move it and now i can just select these things and move them over and truthfully i shouldn't have done that but what i should have done 
is grabbed one, copied it, and I'll add that right here. There we go. Now we've got a, a way to get in. So the last thing we need to do here is ensure that this is set properly. It's set to balance. That's probably good enough. We've got power coming in here, plenty of power, and now our overhead is good, which means that we can move on. So I'm very excited about that. So the very first thing that I want to do is run a train track parallel along here. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna use my picker tool and grab the train track, and then we'll come here into the unified UI, go down to the parallel tool, and I wanna select the first node that I wanna create this at. So right there at these intersections, you have to select every single one. And I'm not overly concerned about how much the road is curving. We're gonna fix some of those things down the line. Let's just get this as far as we want it to go. And I'm gonna tell you, we want this to go quite a ways. The reason for that is we are going to make a connection right here to create a loop and provide some new opportunities for the train track. So I'm gonna come back over to here, and if this was on the wrong side of the road, I hit tab, but it's on the right side, so I will push tab again, and I will push plus to move this thing up. What I'm looking for is this arrow to be directly in the center of these tracks. That's how I know it'll be right. Right there, 62 meters, appears to be just about right. Click on that, flattens it, we're looking good. Then I'll connect these up right here, and we've got an extra node there, and that's why there's that lip. So let's go ahead and delete that node. Now we're looking good. So you might have noticed that I ended this a little early. And the reason I did this is I think it's really important that we take, uh, take stock of what's happening here and attempt to create another stop for Shorewood. I think this could potentially help some of the issues that the city is seeing. If we take a look around, we can see that there's some abandonment you see it right there? Well, let me pop back in this view. I'm gonna turn Anarchy off real quick. Got a whole bunch of homes abandoning, which is really unfortunate. It kind of makes me wonder what's going on here. Is this happening because something uh, strange is going on where people are leaving this community to go to, to another one? Uh, what, what What's going on here? I'm not 100% sure. It just says abandon. So, Couple things I can do here. I can just kind of go through, have a little bit of an urban renewal project and start, you know, demolishing houses at random, which, you know, there's maybe some value in that in the game. In reality, that's a really tough sell for the city to do this sort of remediation uh, and to get rid of historic structures, because that's what these are. But we'll do a couple and see if that solves things. But I think that what really would solve things is to bring transit into this area. So that's what we're going to do. We have an opportunity with the track going here. If we already have, if we're already running the commuter rail and the legislature is already putting up money for the track, why not go ahead and make this something that uh, is beneficial to this community? So I'm gonna grab these wide sidewalk roads and convert it to the wrong one. <laughs> there we go, fix that. And I wanna parallel the highway here. So we're gonna look at our terrain and follow this. Now this would really be a boon for Shorewood because Shorewood is basically built out. That said, it's really hard for me to, in a good, in a, in a good conscience, say that this would be Shorewood because I just don't know. The thing is, rural towns do not have many opportunities for new development. And when they get them and you get the right elected officials in those towns, sometimes they will decide we actually need this development and they will not allow annexation or they will they will talk to the developers and offer them uh, some things that could be very valuable like lower taxes the ability to have your own private well water which some people look at as a better thing depends on your perspective i suppose and then there are many places where they will say well water's not as good especially in places that have had fracking issues and things of that nature Okay, so here we're gonna turn on our road guidelines. I wanna find this bend and make a really nice connection. And this road is gonna be really important because once again, we're gonna grab this and use our parallel road tool to follow this path. Now, this is going to seem incredibly unreasonable. However, 
just stay stay with me it's gonna we're gonna we're gonna figure this out in a way that is plausible oh and i'm in the wrong tool <laughs> so you're going why is it not working where is my where's my train track okay so i'm gonna send this up over to here and it was 62 meters before so we'll hit plus till we get there hit enter and we'll carve into the hillside a little bit but that's okay that's totally reasonable and rational for a train line to do we'll close this and i guess i never really noticed this right here we have the network multi-tool right there we don't even need the unified ui good enough so i am going to run this up space already occupied there we go so this is terrible we're gonna fix this the way that we're gonna fix this is we'll use this right down here we're gonna use our arrange at line mode so i'm gonna pick some of these turns and really soften them you'll see is that makes it a much more reasonable connection for the train to make and apparently there is an advantage to using the unified ui and that is that you don't leave the tool or at least it's easier to get back <laughs> so there we go i'm just coming through selecting some nodes and softening this so the straighter this is the faster the train can go and that is what i want to happen here i want this to be a very very fast connection so we're going to do that in a number of places i think the rest of these are pretty good we should come through here though and set slope on all of these and it's not going to let me do the entire the entire length of track it's just too long so i'll need to kind of go through and select a few of these different locations Okay, so now we're in a good place there. We do need to make our connections though. These need to be fairly straight, fairly quick connections. So we are going to be doing a bit of work here. I'm going to force this into an elevated position and we're gonna have Anarchy on for this. Pop this up, I'll go maybe 10 meters and then we're gonna stay elevated for quite some time. And the reason for this is we need to be able to get this thing to about here and the reason why I think this is an important location is the elevation is approximately the same as the train tracks so I'm gonna switch this oh boy that's gonna be a tricky one actually let's go ahead and make a nice sloping connection here and we'll do the exact same thing over here this time I'm gonna try to mirror the tracks if I can or mirror this uh this power line if I can. And I'm gonna turn off bending so we have our straight slope. Come in nice and straight there. Okay, so let's take a look at what this did. Uh, we've got some things going on. <laughs> that's not a good thing. We're gonna need to make some improvements and that's, that's totally expected. So I'm gonna set many of these to the ground and we will fix our slopes. We're gonna bring some of these up about the same here and then right here we'll leave this and now it's time to set some slopes so first of all we want some consistent heights so we'll come in to move it and we're going to use let's set everything to this height that's the one i managed so i'm going to select all of these then Control h to here there we go and right here the same thing and then i'm going to convert this to be ground level, we'll say that this was a spot where it was filled as we get to the bridge. And that looks really bad. Come in a node controller. And it looks like we have an extra node there. I wonder if I can get rid of this. No, I cannot. That is a needed node. So we are going to just slide it up a little bit. Looks much better. And if I pop through here, I can bring these back a little ways. I don't know how much I love that. I like that considerably more. So we'll pay more to have some of this work done, but I think the ultimate result is this looks a little bit more reasonable. So now we need to slope things out. So we're gonna come into here and we'll begin to slope. We'll set slope there and look at how much better that is. So now we're at about a little under 3% all the way across, same thing here. This one's actually pretty good, make it even better. And then I'm gonna come through at these nodes where they're joining. And what you're gonna see is we get some 
kind of awkward looking stuff. We'll set slope here, it'll fix everything. And then if we really want to micromanage, we could certainly play with these. There we go. So the one thing, I'd love to line these up. I know this is probably silly, but I think that looks better. We have the lights there telling which train can go first. Now there's some height issues here. So control H to here. And now flat actually works better there. So you've got to play with it a little bit. Now here, I want to start to slope up. So we'll select this and we're trying to meet that other slope that we have. This isn't that extreme except for in this one location. So let's go through and you can actually see it drops down there and then raises up and then drops back down. There we go. And I don't love what just happened. We'll just go back to the drawing board and that'll be our first note. I thought maybe it would look okay, but it didn't and that's okay. But that's basically a little bit of a dip and I appreciate it. It looks, looks better even if it doesn't exactly make the most sense in the world. All right, now here, I wanna do something special as well. I think it would be nice to have some sort of decorative bridge asset here. So we're gonna come through and use the force, the use of bridge pieces if available. And we are gonna absolutely have a truss, truss bridge here. I think it would be a real uh, statement piece for the community, something that the community would be very excited about. And uh, it'd be a point of pride. So we need to do a bit more sloping. So we're gonna slope from here and find where we can make this flat. That's 10%, that's way too much. That's four, that's still quite extreme. I'd love to get this below three if possible. There we go, 2.8. So what that's gonna do is cause me to make a couple of modifications. First of all, not that. <laughs> I wanna do this. I wanna extend out our truss bridge a bit further and then come back through, select this, and we're gonna have just a regular bridge piece as we come back to ground level. There we go. And I think over here, we're gonna do the same thing rather than extending that out. We will have one that is not a truss bridge. I like that a lot. And if you were coming down the highway here, I think this would be something that you just, it's a point of reference for you. And I think those are important. Now I'm noticing that this highway's got some things going on and I'm wondering if this is nodes. We're sloping there, are we sloping here? We're not. So we slope, that looks better. And then the other thing I could think of is I could set the slopes just to make sure that we are in a good place. Okay, so yeah, we had some awkward sloping. That looks a lot better now. And I wanna make sure that we can clear this Perfect. Trucks, there's a lot of clearance. So there we go. So now that we have this here, we have what appears to be freight trains going down. That's strange. I want to add another station here. So we're going to come on through and take a look. And we're going to continue with the motif that we've had in this area of using that Swedish rail station. I really like this asset. And I think we're going to place it somewhere around here. And I'm going to fix that in just a moment, but I do think that we need to think about how we're going to get, get across here. Now, initially I was thinking of pedestrian crossing. However, if we take a look here in the community, there are really not any places to add this crossing. No one's going to allow you to put it next to their house, even if they have these little shotgun homes and there's technically space, eminent domain for a pedestrian crossing that will not directly benefit these folks. Maybe they're thinking, I want a road. I want to drive over there. That's what we're going to end up doing. So we're going to add this here at a bridge connection. We'll turn this right in the center using a curved road tool. Perfect. And I'm going to upgrade this one road so that we have solid pedestrian facilities to get all the way here. Perfect. Very, very, very good. So now you'd be able to get to this train station eventually. We're gonna need to do some work here, but I'm very confident in our ability to do so. That said, one of the things that I do not love is we're gonna have a bridge merge, which is very, very awkward in my opinion, but I'm probably wrong. <laughs> it shows that my area doesn't have as many trains as I wish that it did. So again, we have our bending off. I'm gonna put our angle on 
and then just send this right up into this bridge. And I'm really curious, that's probably not good enough. Oh yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> Let's get that upgraded. And now we're gonna slope this thing out. So let's see how this goes. Set slope there, set slope here, enter. Ooh, I don't love that. That's 4.9. I was really hoping to avoid those. So we're gonna pull this thing back. I really wanted to have this centered, but I think the slope is more important than this being centered. And at least you'd understand why it's not centered. I'm setting these all to slope and seeing if that improves anything for us. It doesn't, except that maybe I can live with it a bit more. I don't, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. So here we're going to convert this for a little ways. And I feel like that's a bit more reasonable. Yeah, I like, I like this, this well enough. So now I want to clean the land up a little bit and the road truthfully as well. Just holding down alt there and there won't be development here, but there will be on the on the riverside. So now that we have this, I'm gonna fill in some of this land in between. There we go. It looks pretty good. We could certainly clean up the tracks and we're certainly going to. So again, we're gonna come back into our align at node. We will slope that out. Look at how nice that looks now. And there we go. I just wanted to clean that up a little bit, and I think it's done the trick. There we go. That's looking really nice. These North American free uh, North American rails. I really love the way they look. They feel like home, and I love that. Now we need to make a connection over here. We're gonna do the exact same thing. And there we go, I've changed the slopes just a little bit. I think things look a little bit cleaner and I'm very pleased with it. Now I am gonna move this to fit tightly against the train station. And then we're gonna use our curved road tool again to fix some of these curves. This is just rapidly becoming my favorite tool to use. I think it, it really makes your roadway network feel a bit more natural. And it's just, it, it does some real magic. I mean, that, that curve there is so much better. Um, and I wish that I did not have things popping up through the road, but apparently that's what we're doing right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something about that. And I'm wondering if it's because I left, yeah, shoot. That's frustrating. Well, we can certainly come through here and jiggle our roads a little bit. Hold down Alt, jiggle, and jiggle, jiggle. My money don't jiggle, jiggle, it folds. There we go, looking good. I wanna give some thought and consideration to how we're building these homes here, because that's what I think is the most appropriate here, would be homes except for directly in front of the train station, some commercial would likely fit in very well there because of the amount of noise you'd expect to see here. So we're going to add a bit of commercial and then go into some larger lot residential. So I'm going to leave about one tile separation in between the lots. And we're only going to get Riverside. There we go. Good enough. Now we need some water pipes and we're going to place those underneath the road where they belong. And we're gonna place that on this side of the river so that we're not running water pipes underneath the river. Okay, so we are gonna need power here, which I think is really unfortunate because it feels like the bridge should be bringing the power over or something, but you know, that's not the way things go. So we're gonna to have to fix that, but I wanna fix this angle first. It's bugging me just a little bit. That's why you don't play. That's why you don't play with this, because <laughs> there I go, making things break. Try one more time. Hmm, 
I can break it in a different way. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know that that's a ton better, but we're going to live with it because, oh, we've got to fix that. We're going to get to that in a second. Let's get some power going over here to get things moving. And then we're going to fix our tracks here. So I'm going to use my suburban power line. Run that right across. Perfect. So now we should have water and power over here. We've got to use our unlock tool to fix this. So we'll unlock that segment and then pop out of the unified UI because it creates all sorts of problems. And now if we remember, these are station or platform tracks. So we need to go into our custom platform NAR. And it's, you know, I'm not really sure what the difference is between these. I want to say this is the right one. Generic style, low platforms used for passenger train station assets. Perfect. That is what we're looking for. So we just upgrade this. And you know that you've got the right one when there's this crossing here, because that means that people could go, the uh, trains could go to either platform. That is what we want. Looking very, very good. Like that. What I don't love is this. It's tearing a bit. So what that tells me is I need to set the height of this to the track. And the road can deal with a little bit more of that sloping than the track can. So looking very, very good in my estimation. So we're going to leave it here. Actually, I'm going to let this run for just a moment to see if this fills in because I'm very curious. OK, and we're seeing development occurring over here, but there's no commercial demand. So we're not seeing anything over here. So I'm going to pull some power lines on this side of the road. Not because I think that we desperately need power lines everywhere, but because I know that this is the only way this area is going to develop. So playing with the game a little bit rather than against it, and we can get rid of these dual lines. For the sake of realism, we will cross the road. There we go. It's not beautiful, but it's beautifully functional. While I'm here, let's get rid of this extra signal. That's not warranted, so we won't build it. There we go. We'll get into adding stops here. I don't know that we're going to have any trains coming through here. If we take a look at yeah, nothing. So that will come with time. We are allowing inner city trains. I have that mod in place that allows you to do that. Uh, while the bug is sorted out, things are looking very, very good. Very, very good indeed. So let's now get to the meat potatoes of what we're doing, which is connecting up our station and then building out a bit of our neighborhood. So we are again going to use the North American Rail, and I'm going to do some things that you might hate, but I need you to stick with me, because I think by the end of this, you'll understand the method to my madness, and I'll try to explain it as best I can. So we are going to send this all the way down. For the time being, I'm going to add a crossing here. I know you're not liking that. I'm not either, but we're going to go with it. Then we're going to send a second parallel track out. Now, I want these tracks to go in different directions. We're going to have some crossing back here, but I don't want to use one train. I want there to be lots of capacity here. So what we're going to need to do now is back this out. This is way too close. I can't make my turn in. So we're going to go into our unified UI. Again, back to our curved road tool. Or is that curved road tool? No, it's, it's called the a, a range at line mode. I think that there we could we could come up with a better name for that. <laughs> you see that backs it out of ways. I like that more. And I'm softening this curve while increasing my distance between the road and the track. Both of them are priorities of mine. So this is serving two ends very well. We're going to have to live with this, but I think we can make this acceptable for us. So now we're going to come into our freeform tool. Actually, let's go into our, no, we'll do freeform. Grab it here, which is 15 units. And then I will pull this out. We'll call it 15 units. We'll do the exact same thing here. 16 units, we'll go over 16 units. So nice, solid connections there. So obviously this is not going to be good for traffic. <laughs> so we're, we're going to need to make some changes here, but we're going to go with it for the time being. And we, we will make some fixes here. We're going to elevate this. We will have a viaduct going over. 
but for the time being, I just want to focus on planning and laying things out. So now everything is gonna merge into these lines. So I'm gonna come up, we'll go maybe 10-ish units. I'm kind of curious. We're gonna get these. So is that the number of units to get those? I wanna say that it is. So that is 12 units, and that's where we'll end up getting those stoppings, those crossings. I'll create a new node there to get those to line up. And I just really like the way these look when they're all in a row. So we're gonna go with that. And again, we don't have our bending on. We're gonna send this up 10, send this one up. Let's see how many it needs to be to be straight. Looks like 18. So maybe we're adding eight onto this. So we'll go with 26 here, see if that works well. Honestly, 28 looks better. And here, we're probably gonna have to go 40 or 37. There we go. And we could maybe tighten this up and bring them in a little bit closer, but I'm totally cool with where this is happening. So now I talked about these lining up. They're not lining up, and I really wanna fix that. When I say these, I mean the, the, the lights indicating where the gates are. So I'm curious, if I go into node controller, what is this showing me? It's a middle. If I do bend and I do middle right here, I can't. Well, that's unfortunate. I could, the problem is I actually do have my bend right here. So what I could do is just come through here and add new nodes. And then I'm gonna come into here and change these to be bends. So we do not end up with the lights. Now you see we've got them all right in a row. Looking good, looking really, really good. So I really like this. The one thing I don't like is right now we have a two unit gap on this side and I think we need that on this side as well. So let's pull this over. I'm just gonna delete this going up the side. We are gonna add a crossing or two through here, but we're gonna be a little bit more deliberate with these. And the reason I even care about this is it's where our grid extends from and it's how we're gonna get continuity between the two halves of the city. This is gonna be a significant barrier. And as a result, we're just gonna to need to be very aware of that. So I want to look at where we're gonna make our connections across. And there are gonna be a couple of places that are probably better than the others. This is one of them. This is our direct connection to our other train station. It's kind of a main street. Send that right here. And then we'll go a few blocks down from there, maybe four, get as far as we can, just to have a way to get through here. And with that, I think we have what will already become a safety hazard, <laughs> but, but we need it. So we're gonna need to do a little bit more work here to improve it. And I think what's gonna work is some fencing. So we're just gonna have our vanilla park fence. And I'm gonna use that as a way to protect people from the train. Now this would be a significant concern. Everyone wants these, the train, the city, the train company, the city, the state. Problem is nobody wants to maintain them. It's cheap to put up a fence, relatively speaking. It's very expensive to maintain. They get defaced, they need lots of work. No one wants to pay any money for anything. So you end up in a situation where you don't have fences because nobody wants to pay. Well. We are just gonna say that this is part of the project. And because this is a project that is being prompted by the state, we're gonna say that the state owns this right of way, which is a real luxury that does not often happen. Oftentimes the rail company will own it, have the ability to basically do whatever they want. They will have the right of first refusal, meaning that they can certainly go through and say no to a bunch of different things. Uh, if they had the ability, if the state wanted to sell it, they'd be the first one to be able to buy it and they could turn down anyone who wanted to buy it, the, the, the right of way. So they'll have a lot of power, but the state will actually have a lot of rights and power as well. It's a pretty nice setup. And I think it's gonna work out really well here in Clearwater County, in Superior. So there we go. We now have a barrier. Everyone is happy, kind of. So now we are going to add in some gravel here and this we're gonna have to be really careful with because it could bleed and look real bad i'm 
Here we go. That's looking good. And if we just come down through, we'll see if we've got a couple spots. We do. We can clean a couple things up. All right. And now we're back to the train station. Now this is going to be a lot harder because we've got all of these different tracks. We're going to unlock them all. Now I just desperately want to make sure that we are not in this tool anymore. Whatever we can do to not be in it is absolutely necessary. And then we'll come through and search again for the platform. North American Rail. There we go. And let's see if it lets us upgrade it. It does not. You know why? Oh, it does. Never mind. <laughs> So I've done this before and experimented a bit and gotten stuck. And one of the reasons you can get stuck is it can be really hard to get out of that unlock tool. Uh, but we're out of it and it worked really well. So now it's time to think about what we're doing in this area. And I want to do a couple of things. Now we're gonna call the mulligan on some of the things over here that we've done with our roadway network and for good reason. I think that we need a tram. We need to be able to get people from this train station which is not currently in the heart of downtown, but kind of off on the side and get them to the heart of downtown. The way that we're going to do that is with the tram network. And that tram network will also help get people around in this area. And it's going to be a very, very beneficial thing for us. So that said, let's go ahead and identify our tram, our location for our tram. We don't need to identify our tram. We know we have a tram coming. So, <laughs> and I'm going to kind of hide this back We'll have a transportation use hidden behind a transportation corridor and facility. So we'll get rid of that. Pop back through here and I'm gonna make our connection there. And, ooh, <laughs> it is a little bit in the road. Hold down Alt with move it. We'll get that moved over one. And that actually fits really well right there, but it makes the roads look crazy. So I'm just gonna slide that over create a bit of a bend there. I like that. I like that a lot. That looks good. And you can't even really tell that it's happening, but it is. Sometimes if you notice that there are roads that are a little bit off skew like that, maybe that's why. All right. So now we're going to need to do some work with our tram roads and I'm going to do some interesting things here. First of all, to start out with is the normal two lane tram road with tracks. We're going to upgrade these roads and add in a turnaround here, which we need for this to be functional. Send that right up the side here. We'll have some stops right here. And then we're going to turn and send it this way. Now this interesting looking space is going to be a park. So this is going to be a really interesting spot to have transit. And then we come up here. Now we've got a problem here. And that is that we've got a one way and they're, they're for you wide. We don't have any for you one ways. So we're going to go with a three lane one way to you. So this is where our mulligan comes in, but I think it's going to be for the best. You know what? It's still overbuilt. So <laughs> that's what I was going for. And I think we're still going to accomplish that. That's a hallmark of a capital. <laughs> Just overbuild your roads. I'm speaking to you, Brasilia. And honestly, in some cases, even my own community has a lot of capacity out there at some points in time. So I could send this up this way, but what we're going to do is try to reach more of our state office buildings. And I think that there, you, so one could make a good case to send it up this way. You could walk a couple of blocks to get to the tram. So we're going to send it back this way, turn around by the hospital and send it back. So we've got some interesting tram roads to help with this. So these are, one, these are two way roads, but we want a one way tram. So we're going to use right here, two lane one way tram and we're going to upgrade this i'm curious this has contraflow tram line so this is a one oh interesting so this is a one way road so we've got to be really careful which one we're picking because we want to make sure that we've got two lane and this one is again a two lane one way road without parking spaces so that I want to take a look here in Traffic Manager to make sure that I'm getting this right. Yeah, that's a one way for the cars. That's not what we're looking for. And I'm curious to know if I even have what I'm looking for. Right here. That's what it is. I want to send the tram down the middle, two lanes, one way. So this is perfect. So we're maintaining that this is a two way road, sending this up. All of our 
abandoned commercial there. It's just absolutely beautiful. Then we'll send it down this way, turn around, and I'm gonna come back to this area in just a moment because I've done a couple of things there that we need to talk about. I did that off camera because I was poking around during the city tour and I noticed that some things looked a bit wonky. And every now and then, I can't help myself. I gotta keep playing. And this was one of those days. Now what doesn't it like? What's it mad about? I'm confused. It looks good to me. Ah, it's, it's reversed. Interesting. So I've got to come back and reverse some of these. Hard to see, but that, there's a little arrow right in the center there that shows the way that the tram is going. And apparently these roads are placed in the opposite direction. And as a result, it's going the wrong way. No problem. We can get this fixed. There we go. Now I believe that our directionality is looking good. Come back to daytime as it slowly pushes us to night. And we are going to need to make some improvements here. So actually, I want to talk about this. So I went through here and I lined up some of these row homes to make them have a little bit more symmetry. And I wanted to add a couple of paths. So I did that over here as well. I kind of sorted things out a little bit. We're going to add some more detailing in here in a future episode. Uh, but we want to grow right now and I wanted to straighten these out so they look a little bit nicer so just in, just so that you're aware of that so that if you look you're not confused as to how it got that way so one thing I do want to do though is add a path through here because now there's like a, a one U strip so let's go ahead we're gonna add grid on just to make this easy on ourselves separate these row homes from the commercial that someday very well might show up maybe it won't Hard to say <laughs> at this point in time. It feels like we're basically done with all commercial forever. <laughs> there we go. Looking good. So now we've got to make some zoning decisions through here because we're not going to be able to get power to all of our new transportation facilities until we do. So I want to first of all identify some parks and I'm looking at this and I just can't help but feel this looks very uncomfortable and awkward. And now it feels good to me. <laughs> I don't know why that made such a difference to me, but it did. So let's go ahead and, oops, we're gonna get water pipes eventually. I'm, I'm getting too excited about them. <laughs> we're gonna come through and I wanna identify some park spaces. Obviously I mentioned this one being a park space. Now it is. And I think that this could be another nice park space because this will be a difficult space to develop. And I promise, I promise, this time I am not going to zone park spaces. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, and it looks like we're, we're good in our park spaces. No zoning. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this road right off the bat. And we're going to zone all the way around these park spaces. So I'm going to zone some fairly high density residential right around these. Now these are going to fill in poorly and we're going to have to move them around. That's okay. I want buildings to zone in and then I'll, in, in Van Buren in particular, I'm going to spend a lot of time moving buildings around on my own. And I think that's okay. I don't want to, I don't want to plop things necessarily. I'm not, maybe I'm just not creative enough for that. Maybe I just, I feel like it, I don't know. There's something about it that I just don't like. But I am okay going through and moving buildings that have zoned in. Feels more natural to me. Maybe the big part is that I'm not forcing the game to come up with its own sort of... I'm not forcing things to, to happen, basically. So here I'm going to create a bit of separation and add in some offices. We're going to have some commercial uses, some small commercial... Ah, no, we're going to leave this. We'll put some trees there to hide the train, leave a couple of breaks for some train spotting. And then we'll have some little pockets of, wow. you know, it's funny, I'd love to add commercial, but there's just absolutely no demand. And we're gonna let the demand follow us. So we are gonna add in a number of locations with residential, because that's what the city's screaming for right now. So we are gonna add a couple of pockets of some neighborhood commercial activity. We gotta do something. I really dislike that the game is so against this right now. And I'm going to even, that's small scale, that's fine. In fact, I think with the exception of the state buildings, as we get closer to the Capitol building, we are going to reduce the scale of some of these buildings. 
And this is gonna be a really important note of activity. In fact, right here, we're gonna change this to commercial to benefit from the proximity to this transit service. That's gonna be really good. And then back here again, more residential. And look at, they're all coming in there without water and they're loving it. <laughs> Maybe that's not the way of putting it. They're existing in it. We're gonna to need to fix it. Now here we're gonna taper off the density by our zoning. What I'm gonna do is just grab this district and pull it up here. And then we'll sever that. So this still needs to be a high density district, but we're gonna get more townhomes along there, which to me feels a bit more appropriate for this area. We'll have some offices flanking that main street. And this will be an excellent, excellent, excellent place to live and work. So now we need some water pipes underneath the road, right where they belong. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. This is feeling mighty fine to me. We are going to make our last couple of connections and then I need to upgrade all the roads. Now, would this happen? I don't know. Maybe because it's the capital and capitals operate under different rule sets to other communities. You know, there are a built in number of jobs that a capital is going to have. Having a college means that there are more jobs that a community is going to have. These are going to be high paying family supporting jobs that require a little bit more uh, schooling. And as a result, you're going to end up with a certain demographic living in that community. So that said, you're going to expect certain things. I'm going to get rid of that little residential node there. We'll deal with that in the future. All right. So we've been using our beautiful cobbles. We're going to continue that. And I'm sure at this point you're looking at that crossing thinking, oh my goodness, I think he's going to leave it forever. Unsub, I'm done. This guy's terrible. I promise you I'm going to do something. I can't promise you that you're going to like what I'm going to do, but we're going to do something because we can't leave it like this. This is unacceptable. And you can see it. We're going to look at the traffic flow in just a moment, and I bet it's going to be absolutely horrendous. And the traffic flow in this community isn't good anyway. Uh, and that's because there's a lot of call to sacking in Clearwater County. Okay, so now we are moving again. We are going to fix this and then add our tram network and some train stations. So what I want to do here, we're going to sever these. So I could leave this and attempt to get it to flow appropriately. Maybe we'll do that just for the time being. Why don't we just make a couple of changes, which I, I'm guessing won't work, but we're gonna give it a shot. So we'll come through here, we'll look at our junction and we'll put in flow freely through here. And then here we are gonna add a stop sign. You want people to just flow right through there. Same thing here, a stop sign. And now we are going to add in this here as well. So this we're gonna add giveaway. So that if anything were to come up, they slow down. Now, I think that we can still proceed through there, so we're good. Now, we'll look at our nodes and see if I can improve this. You can see that's too close. We've got to get that fixed. Same thing here. And now I want to line up. We've got these, these lights, and they're not lining up. We can fix that, though. Just a little bit of playing. And then the last thing, we're going to need to back these out, or the trains won't be able to get through. I know this from a bit of experience. So... There we go. Now that little traffic backup has totally cleared, even if we don't love the way this looks. So we've also got some sloping that we need to do here. Let's give that a go. Looking good, functioning surprisingly well. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go with it and we're gonna focus on our tram. So we do have power connection issues. I'm gonna run a temporary power line, uh, which is something that I hate doing, but sometimes you have to do. Okay, so let's get power hooked up here, and I'm gonna run a temporary line right down the side. And I wish I would've used the Suburban line because it actually has an area around it that generates 
power. So I think that's a beneficial thing for us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tidy up a couple of things that are bugging me. So right here, we have zoning. So I'm going to disable the zoning here. Looks much better. And I wanna straighten out a couple of these roads. I was staring at them and it's really bugging me. So yes, there's a curve here that could be beneficial, but at the same time, I think that we could just alt these up. Okay, not the most necessary thing, but I do think it cleans up our zoning just a little bit, and I appreciate that. Interestingly, we don't have zoning showing up along this. Oh, 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 oops, that was a mistake. So I disabled zoning here, and that's the problem. So I've got to fix that. Okay, so the ultimate consequence of this has been that these blocks are a little bit more condensed, and maybe I won't have to move quite as many buildings. So the, we're gonna need to set up our tram line and our train lines now, uh, but I'm noticing that we're missing a couple of crossings here. So you'd be able to come in from this way, but not turn around and go the opposite way. So we're gonna need to add a couple of diagonal tracks. So I'm gonna add one there, and then we'll add another one here. I'm in the same position, mirroring one another, so the trains could switch sides of the track. That is gonna be very, very helpful. I like that. That's good. Okay, so let's get our trams set up. That's the first thing that we'll do. And we'll start our first stop right here in front of the building. And then we're going to go basically every block or so. So this will really help with land values and this is really operating as a local service. It's not super fast, but that's okay. The purpose of this isn't speed it is access speed is being handled by our trains so regional speed local access i notice that we've got a stop that's really close right there that's that's too much not not even i can do that and then i want to look across to see if we're mirroring our stops appropriately and it looks like we've got a couple of spots here where maybe we went a little too hard on our stops the idea being that if you were here, you could walk in either direction and see a stop. That's what we're trying to accomplish. So that means that I've got to move a couple of these. There we go. So that is nice and even now, looking good. Now with that, we should also be thinking about pet access. We're gonna add a node right here. There's already one, we'll add a crossing. And now you can leave the train station and get to the tram on either side of the road. There we go. Looking good. Now we're going to turn this on for the first time. Got plenty of money. We're doing well there. Make it bright again. And now I want to take a look at our train lines. And we've got one line right here, and we're going to need to change this. So let's take this. We're going to move this right into position one. We'll add a stop here. And then there are two stops here, and I'm going to remove one of these stops so that this goes to Shorewood instead. So by removing that, if we come back here, now it's going through Shorewood. Here we go. It's going past the station, but now we can add the stop. And then I'm gonna create another line that goes in the opposite direction. This is not totally necessary, but we're creating super high quality transit opportunities by doing this and by directional service. I will bring this to a secondary bay here There we go. Now, I want this to be on the other side. I don't know why this isn't looping around. We're going to have to take a look at that. That is very strange. So rather than looping, it's backtracking, apparently. Okay, it was on the wrong side here. So by moving that, now it's circulating in the opposite direction. You can tell because we've got our lines going in different ways. Let's take a look at what we have here. So if we look at this, we have random vehicle on this. Let's go with our city link. Same thing here. We'll go with the city link again. And the Van Buren shuttle we've got. We'll go with the city link as well. There we go. Now I want to see if we take a look at this new line. Look at that. 
this already has 293 passengers. That is excellent. So we're becoming a train loving community. I really, really appreciate that. Our tram as well. We take a look at our new line. We could switch this over. I'm gonna leave this. I, in the future, I should grab another streetcar, maybe a light rail vehicle. But for the time being, I just wanna see how this is working. And you can see that right in front of the train station, we've got a lot of passengers. So I'm not gonna optimize this yet. Holy cow, all up and down the line. So right down here at the state buildings, relieving some of that demand by having these trams. It's working really well. Working really, really well. So we could probably throw some more vehicles at this because this, we're going to see a lot of passing. Well, we're just going to do it. Because this is only in one direction, I'm going to double it, get twice as many vehicles, and hopefully that will resolve it. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And before we go, I do want to pop in, take a look at our traffic here. That's not great, but it's not backing up. It is simply heavy. You can see we've added about 4,000 population this episode and more is going to come. We need to add much more in terms of city services. In fact, I am going to dezone a couple of these neighborhood, these blocks to reserve them for city services because we are just not in a great spot there. We'll need to give some more thought to those particular areas. And then over here, obviously, we've done nothing. And we could certainly come through here, and I want to zoom in, take a look at this train, and I think that we need to have a brief train tour. Okay, so as fun as the train tour was, I think we need to take inventory of where we're at. And what we're seeing is that we now have a community that is rapidly growing and has a lot going on. You see this residential demand is finally slowing down. If we take a look, I think that we're gonna have none because it's not rapidly developing. Yeah, finally met the need. <laughs> so, and what that was was another 5,000 uh, 5, people living here. <laughs> Hold up, Phil, that was great, and I'm gonna let you finish, but I just wanna let you know that the population's almost 50,000, you were wrong. So it's not 4,000 population that we've added this episode, it's almost, actually, I think it's over 10,000 at this point. We're almost the 50,000 population, which is pretty astounding. So uh, growth, 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 and more growth in this episode, the city is doing well, and if we take a look over here, I think we're gonna start seeing that some of these state agencies have over 50% of their workers, uh, of their open positions filled, which means that the city's in a much better spot. All right, let's get back to it. The biggest thing here is our education pipeline. We are just really struggling to get uh, people through the schools. And when we take a look at this city now, we take a look at Capital, that's 6,000 people that live in Capital. If we take a look at Lower Downtown, which includes Lower Downtown and now Upper Downtown and Midtown, you see that our population center is really here at this point. We've really shifted that from Ashland. In Van Buren proper, or Old Van Buren, uh, the population's about the same as Capital. So we, uh, we've got most, uh, a pretty significant portion of our population in this area. And as a result, we need a lot more educational opportunities here. And then we'll have all these places filled up. And so with that, I think that that's a topic for another day. We're going to leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you've got any questions or concerns about the build improvements, 
feel free to drop those down in the comments. I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.